Hey guys, it's Chris at Highline Guitars, and you're watching another episode of From the Luthier's Workbench. Today I'm going to give you another good reason why you should consider a CNC machine for your workshop. You can do custom engraving and inlay, and this is a guitar top that I've just recently completed. It's book matched mahogany, quarter inch thick, and what I did was I used my X-Carve CNC carving machine to cut out this elaborate design and then I went back in and applied uh, a finish to it. So in this video, I just want to kind of give you an overview of how I did this and how easy it is and maybe give you just another reason why you should pull the trigger on one of these things. The first step in the process is I need to create my design. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw up the plan in full scale in Adobe Illustrator. And you can use any kind of program, um, vector-based drawing program, as long as it will save out a format that you can use in your CAM process. So in this case, I'm using um, Adobe Illustrator. And everything that you see here that is white is going to be raised up. And then everything that is black is going to be recessed into the wood. Once I'm satisfied with the design, I'm going to save it out as a .svg file, which is the format that I need to use in the next step of the process. After saving out the SVG file, I'll go to my Chrome browser on my computer and I'll visit the Inventables website where I can access their web-based um, CAM solution, which is called Easel. And specifically, I'm using a version of it called Easel Pro, which is their monthly paid subscription version of that software program. And the advantage of using Easel Pro is uh, you can use, uh, for example, V-Bits, which um, allow you to do this sort of carving uh, much faster and with much greater detail. And I can also uh, preview what I'm doing using a much higher detailed, high resolution preview. And that is really important when you're doing this sort of carving because you want to make sure that the bits you've chosen are going to actually achieve the level of detail that you want. And using the, uh, the ordinary uh, preview that's available in the regular easel doesn't give you that level of detail. It's much softer, so that's a nice feature to have. And then another uh, feature that you, is, is really useful, I think, uh, is the ability to preview um, a simulation of how the carving is going to be uh, carried out. And as you can see here, uh, you can do it at regular normal speed or you can crank it up and watch how the router is going to carve out uh, the design. Now, in this particular situation, I'm going to be doing two-stage carving. I'm going to be using an eighth-inch bit. It's a spiral up cut bit. And that's going to allow me to uh, carve out the majority of the, the, the larger areas that uh, would take quite a bit of time for a smaller bit to carve out. So I'll use that to begin with. And it'll carve uh, most of the darker areas as well as the perimeter and um, the pickup pockets and uh, where the neck cavity is going to be. So once that's done, the router will return to home position and I can shut it off and switch bits to the higher detailed V-bit, which in this case is a 30 degree angled uh, eighth inch diameter V-bit. And that will allow me to uh, quickly carve out uh, the fine details. And if you look at the lower right corner, you can see where the uh, estimated time is listed. And here it's uh, 35 minutes for the eighth inch bit to carve out all that area. And then about an hour and four minutes to do all the detail carving. And when you consider how long it would take to do that with a, a mallet and a chisel, uh, that's pretty good. So 
So this is how the design looks after I finished engraving it with my X-Car. The next step is going to be to apply some finish and that's really going to make the design pop out. So what I want to do is I want to enhance the look of that and I'm going to do that by applying artist oil paints and what I've done is I've mixed up some brown, black and some red and then add a little bit of paint thinner. Uh, you can also use mineral spirits uh, to make it a little more watery so that it will get down into the uh, deep areas um, that I have engraved. And then once this has been applied over the entire surface, I'll go back with a rag that's been dampened with the mineral spirits and, or the paint thinner and I'll just wipe it across the top surface to take it off the high spots and leave it into the low areas and that will help to make that design stand out. And then there's a couple of other tricks that I'll use to really pop the design so that it really stands out. But I also want to kind of give it that um, rustic look and this should do it nicely. I'm using a fairly stiff artist's uh, oil paint brush. You can get these at the, the big box craft stores for really cheap. And you can get really creative with the color. You know, you don't have to use um, a dark brown like I'm using here. I'm just doing that because this is mahogany. But, you know, if you're using like a, a maple, or an ash or something that's lighter in color. You could do pretty much any color you wanted to to make the design really stand out. Now the reason why I prefer using artist oil paints is because you have a longer working time. You don't have to rush it. If you're using water-based, uh, by this time I got down to here, this area up here would be completely dry and it would be difficult to remove it. The only way I could remove it would be to sand it off and by sanding it I'm actually taking that design down and I don't want to do that so it's better I think in this case to use artist oil paints and take advantage of how forgiving they are. Okay so what I'm doing now is I'm wiping off the excess just off the top surface of um, the design that was engraved into the wood. So I'll be leaving the paint down into the recessed surfaces. And I'm doing that by just simply wiping it off with a paper towel. And the towels that I use are, these are just some shop towel that I picked up at the local big box uh, hardware store. What you want is a towel that's gonna to be strong enough that it's not gonna to start to fall apart and fray on you, which can um, get messed up in your design. They also can handle um, an application of thinner, which can help remove some of that excess off the top. And you can also use, I found Viva paper towels work really well. They're pretty low in um, lint, so they, they do a pretty good job of cleaning off the surface. And what I'm looking for is that kind of aged, hand-tooled look. So I can get most of the way there just by wiping it this way. And you can see that it's starting to reveal that design pretty nicely. And then what I can also do is once it's dry is go over the top with um, a fine grit sandpaper just to remove some of that top surface color you know, off the raised areas and leave it down in the recess. And then I can also apply a really dark stain uh, just so that it gets into the cracks and crevices and that will help uh, increase the or enhance the contrast that we're looking for. One thing I should mention though is, you know, you're using a solvent and oil-based product here. So that means these rags are 
flammable and they must be disposed of properly. And what I typically do is I'll lay them out on a concrete floor so that the rags aren't touching each other. Just lay them out, let them dry for several days. If I threw these into a trash can, um, the heat they generate as, they, as the solvents evaporate could cause them to spontaneously combust. And whenever you hear on the news about someone's garage catching on fire and that the fire department isn't sure at first what the cause is, it's usually rags in a trash can. So that's what you want to be aware of. Don't want your shop burning down over a guitar. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply, this is a very dark black stain. Uh, it's from Varathane. It's called Espresso. So, uh, to be honest with you, I don't know how this is going to turn out. That's one of the, the fun things about this sort of work is that you never know for sure what you're going to get. And um, that's kind of where the artist comes out, where you want to... Um, you have an idea in your head of what you want, but then where it ends up may be completely different. You just, you just never know. You don't necessarily have to put it over the whole thing because part of what we're trying to do here, we're not trying to get a super consistent look in this. We're trying to get a you know, a natural rough. And I'm putting it down fairly heavy. So now what I'm gonna do, lay out my oil soaked rag. And then I'm going to grab another cloth and I'm going to saturate this with thinner. And what that does is that it concentrates the stain into the cracks in the design. soak into the wood, thinner will evaporate and we'll have this nice rough hand carved look. And it varies. It doesn't stay consistent over the surface. It does vary. So you get some areas that are brown, some areas that are a little bit darker black, some areas that have a little bit more red to them. And that is what makes it look uh, so much more natural. And once this is dry, what I'll do to protect it and enhance the, the appearance of it is I'll apply a wipe-on polyurethane. And I usually just mix up my own batch. I'll take a straight polyurethane, add some boiled linseed oil to it, some mineral spirits, and then I will wipe that on and that will protect the finish. Probably go with a more of a satin sheen so alright I'm pretty happy with it. I think that looks really good. 
Now, another way to pop the design is to thin some of the black artist oil paint with some paint thinner and then just paint it in around the design. You don't have to be too careful here. You can get the paint all over everything because since the artist oil won't dry right away, I can go back afterwards and wipe the excess off the top, uh, the high points of the design, leaving it down in the little uh, crevices in the nooks and crannies uh, that were carved out. And then as a final step, what I like to do is wrap a paper towel around a foam block or a, a sponge for that matter, add a little bit of uh, paint thinner to it, and then just wipe it over the surface. That'll take the black paint just off of the uh, raised part of the design. I set the top aside for about a week to let the oil stain dry completely. Then I sprayed several coats of a matte finish polyurethane over the top to seal it in and protect it. Now all I have to do is make a body so that I can glue the top to it. But that's for another episode. Well, I hope this gives you some ideas of ways that you can dress up a guitar top, especially when you don't happen to have any really nice figured wood laying around to work with. So until the next episode, take care and we will see you soon.